Welcome back to the Jen and Julian podcast. This week we are broadcasting live from outer space. <laughs> we made it. Whoa. It was quite the trip, but we did it. Now we eat freeze-dried strawberries, beach. That would be so horrible. That would be my least favorite thing about being in outer space, the food. Mine would just be like not being able to sleep. I would be fine sleeping, but I would be eating food that I would prefer not to be eating ever. Sleeping in zero G? What about like pooping and peeing in zero G? Um, I haven't heard of anyone getting good pad thai in zero G, and that's a big problem for me, honestly. So we're going to have to sort that out before you're going to take me to space. Well, we're already here. Well, I brought my own pad thai. <laughs> It's just flying everywhere. Guys, this this week's uh, episode is brought to you by Texture. Guys, who doesn't love a good magazine? You know? Mm-hmm. What I don't love about the magazine system is paying the overpriced fees and prices for them, especially when you're at places like the airport the when airport. it's marked all the way up. Texture is there to solve that problem, okay? Texture lets you read all your favorite magazines on your on your devices, on your phone, your tablets, or your computers. You, you can download your favorite magazines. You can you have access to so many magazines, guys. And it just starts for $9.99 a month. That's $9.99 a month, over 30% off the listed price of Texture. When you use texture.com slash Jenna Julian, that's texture, T-E-X-T-U-R-E dot com slash Jenna Julian, or click the link in our description. And Get you started. save the earth. You save the earth. No one's no one's having to print all those useless papers that you're really just going to throw out when you're done with, right? Mm-hmm. Let's be honest here. Texture is on to something. Also, guys, the skim, guys, to get your information in a concise, functional form, the, the skim is there for you, okay? It's a daily newsletter. comes to your inbox. And it's free, by the way. All you got to do is subscribe, <laughs> and you get the email, and that's it. That's all we're asking you to do. Uh, it serves up the news that... I personally think is the most important. It's concise. It has all the points you need without all the mumbo jumbo that's out there. Uh, and right now, guys, if you go to the skim, that's T H E S K I M M dot com slash Anna Julian, you are entered to win a $250 Visa gift card when you subscribe. Check it out. It's a great way to get your information. The end. Thank you, sponsors. Gracias. Thanks for sponsoring us. Pretty one there, Phil. It is pretty cool that. People pay us money because they like the way we talk or something. Is that why? To support us, yeah. yeah. They might not like the way we talk. I mean, this is like, it's kind of a lot of gear and belongings in here to start your own podcast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we started with nothing and you could really tell. You it's could so really fun. tell. <laughs> God, half, half the episodes, one of us wasn't in focus. Yeah. Half the episodes, one of us... Our mic wasn't on. <laughs> or it was like 12 minutes of recording and then you'd have to block them together. Yeah. Who was, I was talking to Dylan recently because he, mm-hmm. we were at um, the Guitar Center and I was talking about how literally I didn't realize until maybe like 20 episodes in that the, um, it's not the refresh rate, it's the uh, audio sample rate of video traditionally is 48 hertz. Um, but a lot of audio devices don't abide by that because mm-hmm. that's the video standard. So a lot of like recordings or recording software or USB mics or whatever would record at 42, I think. And so for up until like I think 20 episodes, maybe even longer, I would have to edit the audio and then about like, thir- like 20 to 30 minutes in, I would have to like reset yeah. the next clip because it, it was fading out of sync. Yeah. yeah. And that's something that like I literally had to just learn the hard way over and over until yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm going to look into this. Why is the audio just <laughs> like outrunning on? the video here? Yeah. But yeah. It's um, so frustrating. Yeah. We've come a long way, I suppose. Like really though. There's still, there still are improvements to be made. Um, you can't see the rest of this room, but we've now sound paneled half of this wall and I need to do kind of most of that wall because it still is kind of echoey in here well i mean it'd be nice eventually to have like maybe a different setup with multiple cameras if you ever wanted to have a guest and we can like sit across from each other because still like even though we have this room that's dedicated we have a very large circle table that's like when we have guests do you remember like the first few times we had guests and we were like okay we'll sit them like in the middle and then the poor person's like looking at me and like looking at you it's it's like like, we've cornered them (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we're just talking at them in yeah. either ear. 
But uh, yeah, hopefully someday we'll have like a setup where we can have guests. No, we were watching Ryan's new podcast. Ryan He's new podcast. I love way. Ryan Higa. You guys should check it out. It's uh, what's it called? Uh, Podcrastination. <laughs> But I've been waiting forever to have him and his boys do a podcast. But everyone they, always wants us to do stuff with them. They just they live in Vegas and we live here, so it's sometimes well. We'll get them on the podcast and we'll get on theirs eventually. But I they suppose. also work like you know they're in the same boat that we are. You're on a never ending hamster wheel of like working on your own yeah. stuff that it's like you barely have any time to do anything. And by the way, I mean talk about that can, video that they just talk put out. About, yeah, I mean talk dancing about, without moving. Are you fucking kidding me? Like. We've, lo- I mean, we're we love Ryan and like them and their videos because we're friends. When number one stands, we love them. Yeah, but like objectively, I can't even say how cool it is that like people who have been on YouTube for so long that are continuing to like up their own game, right? Not because there are other videos doing the same thing or they just other, want to, or it's the meta. It's like this is what Ryan and and crew wants to do, and so they came up with that idea of dancing that moving and like knocked it out of the fucking park. Yeah. To the point where it was like so original. I saw it do well on Reddit as it should have, but it's just, it's very cool to see a channel that's been around so long just continue to like innovate and be mm-hmm. like original because that's like so few and far between it, nowadays. I mean, well, like with any Ryan video, it genuinely made me laugh out loud. He genuinely makes me laugh out loud. Yeah, all of them do, yeah. honestly. Greg? Greg is probably the funniest person I've ever met in Greg's person. Pretty goddamn funny. <laughs> Speaking of Greg, we need a Greg because Greg is the one who who edits their well everything, but also their podcast. So you were talking about having two angles. I I would have loved like a million years ago to be able to like cut from who's talking so they right. have the full screen because that's how podcasts and talk shows traditionally are. And for this, it's like this static weird shot, which we're fine with, but. If we yeah. have a guest, though, it'd be nice to at least be able to sit across from each other. Yeah. So we, I think eventually, yeah, we're not, this is not the final form of the podcast. Like we'd love to have like two cameras and maybe someone who can cut together angles and stuff, which is not that crazy to think about. Yeah, but about. we also don't have guests all the time. So it's not that big of a deal. No, we don't. But I think it would be cool to maybe have it for us. Mm-hmm. Like, a, you know, two angles, one on you, one on me. I don't know. For show. For show. Can I say something that's been like bothering me and I've wanted to say on the podcast for absolutely like, a not. while now? I'm sorry, you don't have permission. Come on. I just want to say something really positive and happy that I see occasionally on the internet that makes me so fucking happy. Okay. So we used to do a lot of MMA podcasts, a lot of UFC podcasts, and we've since sort of like fallen off. Like there was literally a fight last night that we didn't watch. Like there's so many fights now that we don't watch, uh, partly because I think the UFC is sort of like, it's getting a little... Get a little dicey. Are we opening that box? Because I maybe will. maybe not right this second. Okay. <laughs> but we used to talk a lot about Ronda Rousey and what was going to happen with her career and that kind of thing. And I just want to say it has been so wonderful to see such a talented professional athlete sort of have this like you know fall from grace in her career. And traditionally, that's how it works with these high stakes sports. Is like your career is only so long, and then what are they going to do? And we're like we're hoping she's not like going to depend on this. Like I'm going to be an actress. I'm going to you know do run. Rousey stuff. And yeah. You're like, how long can that possibly last if your fight career is over? Yeah. And she has been looking so happy and so like wonderful in the WWE. It's been so nice to watch her have a really happy, flourishing career. Like I am so happy for her. You know, she just got inducted to the UFC Hall of Fame, right? Good for her. She yeah. deserves it. She absolutely deserves it. I, I would agree. And I think I made that observation when I was like, because I follow her on Instagram and I have her ever, yeah. you know, just seeing her like literally do what she wants and make a, a new career out of it. I mean, the thing is, when you, like you said, with the high stakes sports, that's such a great way to put it because mm-hmm. MMA is like the highest stakes sport that there is. It's even higher stakes than boxing because the lifespan of a career is just way shorter. Mm. Um, but, Especially for a female. Yeah. And like she rose to the top so fast, but I still don't even think she was given the credit that she was due because she was so unbelievably dominant. Like right. no one has ever been as dominant as her, arguably John Jones. But for, I mean, Rhonda was, it was like a different species fighting other, fighting humans. And what she did for the sport for women will never, ever be you know, forgotten because of how well the UFC has done after Ronda with women fighters. Mm -hmm. And I think it is incredibly cool to see someone like that who deserves to find happiness and longevity in a career like that Mm -hmm. and to to bank a new career off of what she had done. She deserves whatever she wants after that. I agree. And it sucks, like, the thought of someone 
being such a pioneer for the sport and being such a legend, then having to like, you know, go back to like traditional work because something didn't work and because the yeah. lifespan's so short. That's so sad. Like, I'm glad that she gets gets the time of day in WWE and I'm glad she's happy doing it and, the you know, her fans are so happy for her. I know. Like, the last few times that I've seen Ronda Rousey, like, trending on Twitter, it's because the I don't watch WWE, but Nor I know I, it's yeah. massive and yeah. I know the fans are, like, diehard and it's so entertaining and fun and amazing. People love it. But, like, it's so wonderful to log on to Twitter and see her name trending and see people talking about how they love her in the WWE and that they're so excited about cool. it. It's really rad. But I'm like, I could only hope that there was that that Forbes 100 list for athletes that just came out this year that was like the top 100 uh, highest paid athletes. And for the first time ever, I think, no, not ever, but like in the last, you know, recent amount of years, mm -hmm. there was not a single woman on there, not a single one. And it was Serena Williams or Venus Williams that was on, Serena, that was on there last year mm -hmm. at like, you know, some low spot. Yeah. And because she took a year off to have her baby was there's now no female highest paid athlete in 100 athletes. It's so fucked. Mm -hmm. So like, and I knew this, I knew this sad reality when I chose to play softball. First of all, when I started in gymnastics, I know that my peak age is like 15, 16. Then it's like, you could go to college and play or, you know, do gymnastics, but like likely you're not gonna, you know, do anything after that. Yeah. Like you go into that gymnastics world with this wildly competitive attitude. It's like, you're either going to do something by the time you're 14, 15, 16, or it's like, you're doing this as a hobby. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And I did, I joined a competitive team and I was like, I hate it. I want to die every day. So then I was like, I'm going to take softball pretty seriously. And I played all the way through college. I played NCAA softball for four years, yeah. which to finish your college career is already a relatively low statistic. But we know after that, if you want to pursue like that athletics, like you could be a coach, but like you could, you know, run clinics or you could work in sports psychology, which is what I chose. But it's like, there is no job for you really as a professional female softball player. Like yeah. if you find them, they're very low paying, if at all. Like they took it out of the Olympics. Like there is no future for you. So you talk about tennis, you talk about MMA, you talk about some of these other sports where females can potentially make a, or WNBA, you can make a, a living playing pro. Like you will never get, hopefully not never in the future, but like at this point right now, you know that you're never going to be paid like LeBron, LeBron James or, mm -hmm. you know, Kobe Bryant. Like mm -hmm. there, there's just not a, that opportunity for you. Even if you are the best in the world, you are Serena Williams, you are Ronda Rousey. There's still that much of a discrepancy in pay. But to be able to to watch Rhonda's career in theory for what she trained for be over and continue to be able to earn a living in a way that makes her happy, that allows her to be physical, that's still, you know, very athletic is just like it makes me so happy and it makes me really hopeful for the future for other female athletes that and I'm, I imagine I'm forgetting people that you guys will remind me of in the comments, but it's just really nice to watch someone like continue to have a career you know, because yeah. it's been done by men. Like Brock Lesnar has done it in the WWE. Yeah. And like, not that that needs to be the go-to for MMA fighters. So like, oh, we'll just go in the WWE. Yeah. <laughs> like, I hope so. But it's really nice to watch someone have a career in, you know, pseudo entertainment after their fight career ends. I agree. I agree. Uh, and I think man or woman, the MMA community is oftentimes brutal. It's brutal. And they chew fighters up and they spit them out. And without really realizing that, not only have they trained so many years to become an MMA fighter at a professional level. Yeah, they sacrificed their whole life. Not only that, but prior to that, they probably were a, per a perfectionist or a professional at some other martial art like Ronda was in judo. Mm -hmm. And like so many of these guys are in wrestling or boxing yeah. or jujitsu. Yeah. They've spent years, years, decades of their lives um, perfecting a martial art just to parlay it into a mixed martial arts because it was lucrative. Mm -hmm. And then they have a three, four year career and people are like, eh, they're washed up. That's brutal. Yeah, That's brutal, especially when you're out there f competing with your, with your body on the line, mm -hmm. with your health on the line, 
with your consciousness each night on your on the line. Right. You can lose consciousness and wake up Does in front of brain damage. hundreds of thousands of people, a bloody mess, not knowing where you are, maybe just pissed your pants. Mm-hmm. It's fucking, t- it's sad. Mm-hmm. It's really sad. As much as I'm a, a huge fan of MMA and as I was a huge fan years ago before they, the UFC kind of made some weird decisions, it is a brutal sport yeah. through and through. So it is especially nice to see a mixed martial artist who did so much for the sport and had really put her whole life to becoming a judoka professional, a bronze Olympian mm-hmm. medalist, like succeed. Because if anyone deserves to like make it in the WWE, sure, it's like popular, like really popular celebrities who know how to put on a show, The Rock or what. I mean, The Rock is a bad example because he's put on, you know, years and years and years of athletic athletics under his belt. Like he's he played college and pro football and right. whatever. Um, but like if anyone deserves that spot, I think it's someone like Rhonda. Mm-hmm. So I, I basically just echo what you said. It's cool. It's cool. I think it's, it's just awesome. like, it's so nice to see her on Instagram and she's like happy. Mm-hmm. Like, cause she doesn't, although I'm sure the WWE brings a whole new slew of pressure and stress and all of that onto her. Like, it's not the same type of stress. Nothing will ever make her yeah, stress we used like to, those We used to rag days. on her and I think a lot of people did. A lot of, a lot of people did not like her because she had this attitude, you know, about winning and about, you know, just everything in general. Not shaking that was, hands and whatever. Yeah, it was really, you know people saw as bad sportsmanship is all that stuff yeah. but now that she is in an entertainment field in theory it's she seems fucking happy isn't that like when you're a fan of someone isn't that's all, that, that's it all makes you, you so happy to see someone that you like happy yeah it's really nice yeah yep i i i'm a big fan of carlos condit and he is recently retired i think for the second time and it breaks my heart to see him lose because i know that like he's he's past the point of like being a a champion competitor and that's just the way it is. Like Mm -hmm. you have a lifespan, but I've always just like loved his fighting and I've loved his work ethic and his personality. And I've just been like a through and through fan of his. And it, you know, I remember like six or eight months ago, he was on the the MMA hour. He did an interview with Ariel Hawani and he was, he was asked like, why, why'd you come back? We didn't expect it. Like what was the decision? He was like, dude, I, I got one skill. And I need to feed my family. Yeah. And that breaks my heart. Yeah. It just is so sad to hear, especially when he already has been so successful in the sport. You're like, mm-hmm. well, where is the money? Like, mm-hmm. what the hell? Um, and that's one of the major reasons why I just like, I can't support the UFC like I used to. I just can't. Mm-hmm. So they make these fighters like slaves to their company and they don't pay them well and whatever. But um, kind of on a more positive note, he started his coffee company and I was like, fuck yeah, I'm going to follow this <laughs> coffee company and like, I'm going to support the fuck out of it. I'll buy their co- their cold brew. And then they followed me back on Instagram and I was like, yeah, I sent them a message. I was like, I'm a big fan. <laughs> like, it's like, you just want your idols or the people you look up to or, or are fans of to, in, in just the most simple sense, you just want them to find happiness. Yeah. And it makes sense because like a lot of you guys are so wonderful and like you tweet things at us like oh it's so great to see you happy and things mm-hmm. like that and sometimes it's like well why like what do you care you yeah. know what i mean but it, I in get the that. kindest way in the kindest way it's like i'm really surprised that people care <laughs> yeah yeah it's like i appreciate it of course and it's so wonderful to get that but like why why yeah and i get that from being a fan of other things yeah. and people but yeah that's funny that you brought that up because I was thinking about that the other day. I just been, I've been she's like on a ranch with all yeah, these animals. Wa- yeah, I've been watching like her on Instagram, and I'm like, well, because I'm like low key back on Instagram, like a little bit. I mean, I'm not really you're like not low key post, on anything. I'm not dude. like you're, posting you're, pictures or anything. I'm like occasionally dabbling in stories and visiting and looking at other people's stuff. I'm lurking a little bit. You're uh, back on Instagram. There's no low key. Really. Mm, she back. But I was I was watching her story, and I, yeah, I was watching her take care of ducklings and like spend time like at home and i'm like this is so fucking nice because yeah. every you know piece that you've ever seen about ronda rousey she's just like riddled with stress and fucking pressure and mm. you just can't even imagine what that's like mm. just seems really nice it's yeah. nice it is cool um i kind of wanted to talk about some some of the stuff that was dropped at e3 um, we're traditionally not like a gaming podcast because we're not. <laughs> Nor really are we like, a UFC podcast. But we just talked about true. that. <laughs> hey, we're here for our fucking interests, and that Yo, might change yeah. week to week. Um, but if you didn't catch up on E3, it's still happening. It's all through the week. And you're started going this weekend. On Tuesday. I'm going on Tuesday. I'm not. Going. Um, I'm sorry, I won't be there. That's okay. I, I will miss you. Don't be sorry. You're just not going. I know you're gonna have fun without me though. Yeah, I'm. I'm going with Jason. Uh, we're gonna go. I'm actually really excited. I've never been to E3. 
I've always wanted to go. It's in LA. I could have mm-hmm. gone so many times, but I've never really had a reason to go. I've never been this ingrained in the gaming p- community. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited because I feel like it's finally the right time to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited to meet some people, you know, and just kind of like go, go have a thing. I don't have any obligations, which is nice. I don't have to be on like a panel or anything, which is, yeah. I'm just going to go. And yeah. that's kind of cool. Um, and there's been some cool updates um, released so far. Oh my God. Um, which if you guys haven't been following along with E3, I'm sure maybe some of the bigger updates. Uh, that trailer for Cyberpunk looks incredible. Oh my God, what's happening? Oh my God. What are you doing Oh, it's over this there? video that's playing. The court, oh my God, the court video. <laughs> it's really fun. Um, uh, Cyberpunk looks Cyberpunk. really cool. Yeah, like I don't, I was saying like I, the video, if you haven't seen it, look up trailer for Cyberpunk. It's it's an incredibly cool looking game, but like I don't even know what the game is yet, but the, the world that they created yeah. looks bad. Ass. I imagine the story is badass. Yeah. Which is what I'm looking forward yeah. to. And you were like, oh, there's a, a new trailer for the new Life is Strange. And I look at Julian a little bit because first of all. You did not play the whole first one through. I played the whole first one through. I was there for most We did of it. not finish the second one second because one was, it, it was it was pretty cringe. It was hard. They I mean, switched voice actors. You can't do that from a part one to a part two. Yeah. I mean, like, I, we streamed the first little bit of it and everyone was like, just give it a chance. Like, you guys are making fun of it too much. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to rip on it too much. But it is a little frustrating, I'd say, to play that live streaming. I yeah. I might finish the second one like on my own yeah, if yeah. I have time. But if the third one is a little better, I'd be down to play it. Yeah. Plus it's fun. Like the stream likes when we play story games on mm-hmm. occasion because we we just play PUBG at this point. So. I know. And like we could we could definitely be do doing a better job of being quote unquote variety streamers. Yeah, we're doing a bad job. I'm very sorry. Um but there's a spin-off. I think it's like a spin-off game that was announced by Square Enix. It's the Adventures of Captain Spirit, which I think is in the Ooh. same world as Life is Strange. Did either of the what are their names? In Life is Strange, the girls? Chloe and Chloe. Max. Did either of I them think. have a brother, a younger brother? I don't know where the captain of I don't know. Spirit, we captain didn't finish Spirit. the second Regardless, one. Regardless, it, it looks like a spinoff game that I haven't really... I, I saw a trailer for it, but... That's fun. It looks cool. I don't know. I'm uh, Okay, so let me tell you. What? I am so excited for, for Halo Infinity. Oh. Holy fuck. Oh. Dude, I, I saw that trailer. Chris showed us that trailer because I didn't know it was announced yet. But nobody knows what it is yet. Well, it's. I feel like it's likely a battle royale. You're that's the logical. Well, because they said it's for PC, right? Yes. Oh. That's like the most exciting. Oh. Even, even if it wasn't a battle royale, oh. I'm excited for the fact that it's on PC because so many games that you just want to fucking play on PC come out on console now. Mm-hmm. Are you looking up that? Well, no. I wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that? Mm-mm. Hmm. I feel like you would. What? I feel like you would do that. That's something that you would do is look up. What would I do? You would complain when I. I wouldn't. I didn't do anything. I was was trying to play this while you were talking about Halo so we could get excited. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. So they basically released a really small teaser where they showed just nostalgia in Halo form. With the warthogs driving around and Master Chief with his helmet and just, ugh, just and rhinos, not rhinoceri. How do you say rhinoceros is plural? Rhinoceri. Rhinoceri running around happily. <sighs> but you know what? You don't have to take our word for it because if this announcement is big enough at E3 and enough shit gets talked about, you know where it's going to end up? Boy, don't do it. Don't do it. In the Skim newsletter. Oh, he did it. Check the Skim newsletter right now, guys, if you want all the (laughs) up-to-date big news out in the world, whether it's at E3 or it's in the government or it's in the box offices. You want to know about it, and you don't want the the fluff that's guarding all the important information online. The Skim does that for you guys. It's delivered to your inbox each morning and has all the news and info you need to start your day, and it's completely free. Okay? That's all it is. You don't have to read everything. They just give you the nice cliff notes, okay? If, if you ever were in school and you didn't read the book <laughs> that you were supposed to, you read the cliff notes, okay? Mm-hmm. The skim is that for, hey. I did not. The skim is that for life. I okay. always read the book. Okay, yeah, yeah. Sure. A well, a Virgo. Okay, well, for those of you, you know who you are, who maybe just, you know, got a little distracted, didn't have time to read the whole chapter, you popped on little spark notes, cliff notes. That's what the skim is, except it's, you, are naughty you cannot 
judge people naughty. who use the skim. I'm not naughty. Naughty. Guys, the skim serves up the news. Um, it's You can devour it nice and fast. It's like a little snack with two Cs. It's wonderful. <laughs> You'll be in good company because 4 million people currently wake up to the skim every morning, um, including Oprah, Sarah Jessica Parker, my personal favorite, and Stephen Colbert. <laughs> What? Could you pick out Sarah Jessica Parker if I showed you a picture of her? Yeah, probably. <laughs> is she Anne Hathaway? Because if she's not, then I could pick her out of a lineup. Also, guys, you could be entered to win a $250 Visa gift card when you go to The Skim. That's T-H-E-S-K-I-M-M dot com slash Jenna Julian. Uh, register and subscribe to the newsletter. You won't regret it. Also, guys, when you want to read your magazines, don't grab those thick pieces of paper charged 10 bucks, 20 bucks, however much in an airport, little mm-hmm. mark. G- get your texture and get your stuff sorted so that when you're ready to read your new men's health, men's fitness, women's health, National Geographic, um, I don't know. Any, Anything. Any other There's magazines? So many Oprah there. Weekly. That's not a magazine. <laughs> it's uh, called you O have Magazine. It, o Magazine. You have it already on your texture, whether it's uh, through the texture app on your phone, your tablet, or your computer. You can have them all ready, paperless. You're saving the earth. It's a better way to read your favorite magazines. They deliver the app delivers unlimited access to over 200 premium magazines and right now you can try it for free at texture.com/jennajulian. Okay? Starts at just 9.99 a month, but you can give it a spin. Give it a spin. All right? See how you like it. Hop in the driver's seat, give it a little rev. Okay? Don't be holding paper that you're just going to trash. Just I mean, like I, I remember it's like an old thing when you go into a bathroom there's like a stack of magazines. I mean, come on. That's that's grandpa stuff now. You have your device. Get your get your magazines on your device. None of us go to the bathroom without this thing anyway, all right? <laughs> go to texture.com slash Jenna Julian to start your free trial today. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. So uh, they, let's see, I wanted to talk about the, the um, Red Dead Redemption had a trailer. I didn't play the first one. I did. And then you I, did? Yeah. When? Before we had a Twitch channel a long oh. time ago. I played the first one in college with oh. a roommate of mine. We kind of play it together. Like I would play Which you roommate? Well. Do I know him? You don't. He was he was my freshman roommate. You never met them. Oh, boo. Shouts out to Adam <laughs> for playing Red Dead Redemption with me and also Black Ops with me and also watching all of Reno 911 with me. Wow. Sounds like a pal. Real pal. Wow. He's not the one that would sit on the weights and scoot across the room in the gym, right? No, that was uh, that was my buddy. He was not a roommate of mine. Just a friend. He was just a friend. We mm. would be workout partners. He was a soccer player. Mm-hmm. And so we would go to the athletic weight room together. And uh, he was small. Like he was just short, mm-hmm. small guy. He was a soccer player. He didn't need to be big. But he was quick and he was athletic. And we used to go do the cable row machine where you grab the cables down. And you either do like standing rows or you do like bent or like, you know, kind of seated rows or whatever. So he would take the cables and he would back himself all the way up across the whole athletic gym. And then he would just let go of his feet and slide across the floor. So dangerous. And I just remember that was my experience having a workout partner in college. Mm-mm. But um, no, that wasn't my roommate. That was a good time zone. Um, what? There was one other thing. Um, oh, yeah, Bethesda. They're going to announce something. I think like... Should I check to see if it's been announced? I think I it was. I don't know. Didn't they announce? They all announced out? the Fallout thing, but I they, hope it's Skyrim for they're, iPhone Beach. Their big announcement, nine thirty. Oh, Keep okay. going with the meme beach. Okay, so it's it's in thirty minutes. It's wow. we're literally like recording this podcast wow. right before the big Bethesda announcement. Is it Skyrim for your Apple Watch? Hey guys, please buy Skyrim again now on Apple Watch. Okay. Beach. Okay. Yeah. Would you play it if it was on your watch? No. You I would never play it if it was playing on Playing that game on your watch. That's such a complex game. How would you play it with two buttons <laughs> and a touch screen? But that's the gimmick you have. You know Fortnite came out for a Switch, right? Did it? Yeah. Wow, they're really on everything, man. What do you thought what are your thoughts on um the PUBG winter map and everything like that? I'm excited. The riot shield. You're kicking the cord, so it's I like noise. it. It's I making like, noise. It's, it's making noise. I like it. Oh. Uh, if you were an audio producer and you would like a job, please contact oh. me. I need to keep you know, like in every check. every time I've ever gone somewhere where someone else has to mic me up, like on everything I've ever done outside. I of know the what times, you're gonna say. 
they they always I wear all my jewelry and stuff. I've been wearing the same like chains and necklaces for like years, and I always put them on. And the audio person always tells me to take them off. So that's noisy as hell, bitch. Take what that also, off. What you also know happens, you know better. And I'm like, I was hoping maybe this time will be different. What also happens in that scenario is mm-hmm. they're reaching around your body to mic you up, and you make the joke that they're going to second base on you, and then they get really uncomfortable. <laughs> now I go, oh, you going to second base? Yes, and then they're like. Blush, blush, sweating. <laughs> it's funny. It breaks the ice. It does. But it is a funny joke. Because I've seen you make that joke on so many people who are just unassuming. Because they're being all nice and like shy because they have to always like reach down my shirt sort of. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know we are going to go with second base today, baby. What made you want to get into audio engineering? Going to second base while making people <laughs> up, baby? <laughs> They fighting? don't. They are, they're always so respectful and like don't even make eye contact. And they're like, "Can you can you put this down your shirt for me?" And I'll I'll try and grab it out the back here. I'm like, "You gonna clip it to my underwear, BB, or just my pants?" <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> what? Speaking of uh, underwear, how are you enjoying being an, a homeowner with a pool? I feel like it's been quite the uh, change in our lifestyle, at least for weekends. Yeah, big time. For weekends, absolutely. We wake <laughs> up on Saturday and we're like, let's go outside. Go yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like, as many of you guys know, I was like severely vitamin D deficient to the point where I was taking one pill a month that was 50,000. 50,000 IU. Yeah. And uh, I know people, other people have tweeted at me too that they've recently got diagnosed with that same thing. Yeah. But like... Being able to go outside in a place that, like, makes you happy is the biggest luxury, I think, ever. You know, having a happy outdoor space. Mm -hmm. Because even we went back to our old house. Like, that was a more than decent backyard that we had at our old house. And um, the way that it was just configured and the tiles on the ground, like, it felt like 30 degrees hotter out there than it did here. Yeah. Because there's, like, no air that passed through that back it was so hot and weird and just like oh it felt so bizarre yeah but like you know to be outside in in a place that like has a breeze and like you're getting you feel like you're getting sunshine and fresh air has really been life-changing yeah because i feel like i'm getting sunlight and it's making me a better person i mean (laughs) when you work on the internet you get trapped in this cycle it's a joke that everyone makes every youtuber or twitch streamer makes we don't go outside like it's nice we literally don't go outside. Yeah. And up until the point where we've now had our, a nice backyard that we like and a pool and whatever, like some outs- outside space of our own, it's been so amazing what it does for your mood. Mm-hmm. Even just a couple hours a day, a couple minutes a day, whatever. Well, yeah. You're just... There's a lot of people that say the vitamin D really acts more like a hormone than, than a vitamin. You know what I mean? Yeah. It really... It's, it like does a lot for your mood. Mm-hmm. But like I'm also a person that came from the East and like we would have... 300 days of overcast a year. You know, the same amount of sunshine that there is in Los Angeles, we would have overcast. And you really sort of, your body sort of depends on those summer months to go outside and like make some vitamin D. And you're just like, the second it's nice out, like everybody's outside, like everybody's doing, you know, I feel like in Boston and uh, Rochester, like the places where I lived previously, everyone is seizing those summer like months so hard. Like we need to have a plan. We're going to the beach at 7 a.m. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Whereas here, it like, I always thought that if I moved here, I would be this, like, outdoor person and, like, you can do so much outside. But yeah. because it's like it all the time and because you can do so much outside, you sort of start to take it for granted. Yeah. You really do. Yeah. Well, that ha- I mean, that happens. Like, you live in a place a long time and you just... Yeah. Well, that and in combination with working on the internet yeah. where you're just, like... It's a weird combo. It's weird. Yeah. It's so weird to live in such a beautiful place and you're just like, well, I can't see my laptop screen outside, so I better go inside. (laughs) I know. And the dogs are happy too. Yeah, they're very happy. And we got to spend some time with a a fourth pup. Oh, it's Jolene. Jolene. I, like, I love watching other people's dogs. People always, like, underestimate how serious I am. I'm like, I will always watch your dog. It is a pleasure for me to watch your dog. It's more of a favor to you than it is the person who needs you to watch their dog. I need to watch your dog for me. Give them to me. Yeah, you really are. Yeah. Well, I think that if you are if you were like a person that had one dog and then someone's like, yeah, watch my two dogs. Like that's a big change, you know, to go from one dog to three dogs, which we already have. But like if you're like us and you're already at the point where you have like a pack of dogs. Yeah. Just keep throwing them in here, man. It's just more for the pack. It really honestly makes no difference to me. Yeah. 
Like when we used to watch my mom's dog, we used to watch Gilby. Gilby. Like she's wild, but like it's 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 no big deal since you're so much of your day is already dedicated to focusing on your pack of dogs. Like yeah. it's really not a problem. Yeah, you know. I know. Well, because we talk about getting another dog, and um, like namely a retired racing greyhound adopted, yeah, you know, adopted one. And I've been watching hours of greyhound videos on yeah. YouTube. It's really bad. Ooh, also, we can switch back to this in a second, but okay. I've also been watching hours of POV water slides. Yeah, tell me about how you got sucked in that. I hole. don't know. No I just started intended. watching them. It was really cool. So they're just, if you type in like POV water slide, because I was it is like- a, It is a youtube hole hole for sure. It's right? the most youtube like, But it's insane that some of them have like 87 million views. I feel like every hole that you ever fall down on YouTube, you find those channels that are just killing it. And yeah. you're like, wait a minute, channels- do this. Well, this imagine is- being that guy and you upload, you know, you had a GoPro on your head as you went down a water slide. Then you're like, wow, five million people watch this. <laughs> I better go back and let's make a whole channel on a, it and then a start traveling to all the water parks. And- yeah. And I mean, there's roller coaster ones, there's water slide. I like the water slide ones because yeah. they're. What like, about the one where they're in the chamber and then the floor just falls out beneath them and they go straight down? That makes me so nervous. You want to go do that later? No. I mean, I've done the ones where you're like, it's just a single drop and yeah. it's super high. But you don't start standing up. No. Fuck you that. don't. You don't. They, those people like get in. I'd never seen them because I haven't been to a water park since I was like, I don't, I took um, the kids that I babysat, I took them one time to a water park and I'm pretty sure that was the last time I've ever been to a water park. Yeah. Even before then, I'd only been to like one before. Mm-hmm. Um, but you like stand in this chamber and they close the door and then the floor drops out and you just drop. You go straight down. And, I mean, and you go tube, so fast. So you can't like come out of yeah, it. Yeah, you go so fast that after the drop, you have you, to like, go, go up, up and yeah. then back down to slow you down. I mean, no thank you. No thank you. Yeah. I mean, there's but, not but, a lot as an adult that appeals to me about going to a water park. Forgive me if There should be offensive. a water park for adults where there's liquor everywhere. That sounds like a terrible idea. And there's once you walk in, you've you sign a paper that says, "Whatever happens, happens." Comma, no, comma, baby. absolutely not. Whatever no. Whatever happens, happens. Comma, baby. And no. Then, then you walk in. No. Okay, you're greeted no. by waitress or waiters holding pitchers of beer. No. And then they feed you the pitchers of beer, and you That's just drink them, idea. and then that you is walk. A terrible and you idea. Walk up the steps to the tallest slide. And you get to the very top. So I'm getting like hives thinking about drunk people climbing up tall ladders. And then all of a sudden someone's falling down the stairs because they're drunk. And no. They fall. And you move to the side and they fall up next Julian. to you. And like, okay, I get one spot Mm-mm. closer in line to nope. the top. And you get to the top. And you can watch R-rated movies at the top because you're an adult. And, I don't. And then there's no water slide. It's just a movie theater that's wet. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I, it's making me nervous just thinking about it. And then you take off your VR mask. You've been in your living room the whole time. The water has just been what a, a new, typical a Julian technology. Solomita joke. <laughs> a new technology that makes you feel wet when you're not wet. <laughs> Sick. It's called water, but the E is a three. Water. <laughs> cool. VR coming to 2020. I invest. Thank you. It's my new startup. <laughs> okay. I'm really invested in it. Um, but I've, I've been watching like hours of Greyhound videos. You also were watching time lapses of like pools being built and houses so cool. being built. Yeah. I really like watching time lapse videos of things being built because I guess I was dumb before and didn't know how things got built. So It's really interesting to learn basic ass shit like what go, like when you're building a kitchen like what how they what the yeah, order what of goes operations in first, yeah. yeah. It's really cool. It's crazy. Um but I've been watching a lot of Greyhound videos and I still like I know you guys want us to get a big dog and I, I've just, I've never had a big dog, so I'm a little nervous, but I'm also, I'm more nervous about like the practical stuff. Like, you know, right now if it's Christmas or, you know, whatever, we can still stay in hotels and Airbnbs with three little dogs because they weigh boy. under a certain total amount. Yeah. Like if we have a big dog, like, are we going to have to board them separately and then take the little ones with us? Yeah. Like. It logistically, I think, presents some problems to our life currently. Which or we can just get a really tall trench coat and he can sit on my shoulders and we can pretend to be a very tall yes. man and his face can be yes. on the top. I'm just like, I don't ever want to let something like that negate all of the, like, day in, day out, like, how much we could give to another dog and how much another dog could give to us. And our dogs. Yeah. Our, a big dog would be good for our dogs. I know. And I feel like a lot of people, too, when they when they consider getting other dogs, they're like, I don't want it to take away my time with my current dogs, yeah. which I always worry about. 
But then when I watch them interact with each other and like have a really good time together, I'm like, it's not all about me, the yeah. bitch. You know yeah. what I mean? Like your dog enjoys time with other dogs. That's true. That's really true. Like that that to me is like when when we got Peach and she was so rowdy and like ran around marbles and drove him crazy for a while. When they finally warmed up to each other and now they're like in yeah. love with each other. Yeah. That to me is giving your dog a proper experience as a dog. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you're you exist, you're on this planet to like be a dog, you know? Like yeah. you're not here to be my baby as much as I baby them and treat them that way. Like I need to teach you, you know, how to be safe and stay alive, but mm -hmm. like have an experience as a dog, which is like accepting love from other dogs, you know, learning how to trust people and other dogs and, you know, yeah. all of that. Mm -hmm. So once Marble like accepted love from her, I was like, and he's, he's sweet at the dog park now too. Like he, it's, you're giving your dog a proper experience as a dog. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. Though. So I would love for a greyhound that, you know, has had probably a shit life mm -hmm. for them to come here and all, all our job is is to just give you a proper experience as a dog so you can have dog friends, do dog stuff, yeah, and just relax. Yeah. Like they should never feel fear or pain. Like you it's your job to just exist here mm -hmm. and I'll make sure that you're happy. Just exist, little guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I would love a big dog. Yeah. It'd be really fun. I would love to get big sweaters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you put them on him. It's like I can imagine just a big goofy peach or a big goofy Kermit. Well, you want a girl one, don't you? Yeah, I think it'd be nice. That piss gonna kill that grass out back, boy. What, like a boy dog who doesn't piss? No, a boy, boy dog pee doesn't kill grass. Girl dog pee kills the grass. What? Yeah, it's a fact. Okay. I'm serious. I'm gonna, ch I'm gonna really quickly. I'm just serious. Check. Uh, Go ahead, check it. Check the sources here. Go on for that. it. Hey Siri, what's the difference between boy dog pee and girl dog pee? Okay, I found something on the web for what's the difference. It's not what you, it's not what's in their pee. It's how and how much they pee. Wait, why do some male dogs squat to pee? Kermit. <laughs> <laughs> um, hold on. Let's see. Let's see. Cuteness.com. Just type in "Does girl dog pee kill your grass?" Because you can see that our grass back there is so nice. Every spot that Peach pees in, it's like a nice little brown circle now. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hold on. This is crazy. Boys versus girls. It's not what's in their pee. It's how and how much they pee that matters. Female dogs squat to urinate, depositing a concentrated amount in a single spot, compounding the grass damage. Male dogs lift their leg. So it's not their pee. It's their, their method of dispersing it. It's not like female dogs have like poison in their pee. And did sorry, I you made you made though? it sound like female dogs have pretty much cat pee, which is poison. I didn't tell a lie though. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, then Kermit, when he's tired, is also destroying the grass because he squats when he's tired. But it's in a straight line, boy. No matter what position his body's in. What about marbles? He drops like a single. Ounce. His pee is so light, it doesn't even make it to the ground. Not even an ounce. It Half evaporates an ounce, on the way out. <laughs> Sometimes he'll like lift up his leg for five seconds it's and like we're a like, drip. nothing's there. Yeah. Well, on that note, guys, uh, we're going to end the podcast there. So think <laughs> about pee throughout your Monday and your week and have a, have a wonderful week. Um, also, we'll be on Twitch pretty much every night streaming live from um, outer space, which is where we We're currently are. It's space. amazing that we have an internet connection this Julian's fast Julian's been lying space. to you. We didn't really get to space. Oh, yeah? Look at the background. I bet I made it outer space. I don't know, though, because that's in the future. <laughs> oh. 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 Who are you fighting? Wow. Thank you guys for hanging out. Have a wonderful week. Bye. Bye.